Welcome back to Crystal Clear on the Roundtable. I'm Osric Vox, and we have a huge update on the Steven Universe movie. This morning, Cartoon Network revealed that the movie is a musical. But alongside announcement came a huge press release that confirms a bulk of the characters in this movie, and I think everyone is going to be happy. While I do want to examine the promo Cartoon Network released, let's actually break down the press release and then go through all the musical guests, as a lot of those musical guests listed are already characters in the show. Chance the Rapper, Estelle, Patti Lapone, Uzu Aduba, Gallant, and Ime Man are among the bold-faced names contributing music to Steven Universe The Movie, a musical version of the Cartoon Eric series returning this fall. Now the key word here is returning this fall. I wonder if they're counting the movie as the return, or if this movie is actually accompanying the beginning of season 6 and beyond. However many episodes we have left of Steven Universe. That's very particular wording, so keep Keep your eyes out. This is just the beginning of the news. San Diego Comic Con is next month. It's only a few weeks away, so we're certain to get more information there, but more on that later. Next up in this press release, we have the official synopsis for the film. The music-filled adventure for Steven and his friends will mark his first television movie. Which first? Alright, you gotta think about that. Steven thinks his time defending the Earth is over, but when a new threat comes to Beach City, Steven faces his biggest challenge yet. Yet. So this synopsis, along some of the characters in the cast list, confirms that this movie will take place after Change Your Mind. Which I know seems like a no-brainer, but there's been a lot of speculation for the longest time that the movie would take place before Change Your Mind. That we will still have the previous Crystal Gem Regeneration forms, and whatever happens in it will be completely inconsequential to the rest of the series. This has officially been debunked. We are in post-Change Your Mind territory. And I know I speculated in the past on the possibility of a time skip, and a movie would be a great way to introduce such a concept. Moving on, Steve Universe the Movie is executive produced by Cartoon Eric Studios and Rebecca Sugar. Chance the Rapper co-executive produces with Kat Morris, Joe Johnson, Alonzo Romarez Ramos, and Ian Jones Cordy. So not only is Chance the Rapper producing music for the movie, not only that he'll be featured in the film, but as a co-executive producer, he actually has a bit of creative control and input in the movie, which makes me think if he actually plays a character in the film, they will have a significant role. But hold that thought. The full list of musical collaborators and performances with original songs by Rebecca Sugar in collaboration with Chance the Rapper, Estelle, Gallant, Eme Man, Ivy and Sarashu, Jeff Liu, James Fauntleroy, Mackie Stewart, Mike Kroll, Jeff Ball, Grant Henry, and Julian Zorsi Sanchez, with performances by Estelle as Garnet, Patty Lapone as Yellow Diamond, Uzo Aduba as Bismuth, Christine Ebersole as White Diamond, Lisa Hannigan as Blue Diamond, Zach Callison as title character Stephen Universe, Dee Dee Magnahol as Pearl, Michaela Dietz as Amethyst, Tom Sharpling as Greg Universe, Shelby Rabara as Peridot, Erica Luthero as Sapphire, Charlene Yee as Ruby, Grace Rolek as Connie Maheshwaran, Jennifer Paz as Lapis Lazuli, Katie Micucci as Sadie, Matthew Moy as Lars, and Nana Flau's in it too. This is just the performances, as in, these are all the characters who are going to sing, not even including whoever the hell is the villain in this film. Which means there are tons of more characters that can pop up in this movie that haven't even been confirmed yet, such as Jasper, any of the uncrypted crystal gems, such as Crazy Lace, Biggs, Snowflake, maybe Mystery Girl, and just so much more. And if Lars is in it and singing, then the off colors are almost a shoe in as well. This is truly going to be the ultimate Steven Universe experience. Now looking at the actual characters who are going to sing, of course we're going to hear the Crystal Jumps break it down as usual, but we're going to have more singing from Yellow Diamond, and the first ever songs from Blue Diamond and White Diamond. Both the diamonds are here, and they're going to sing, and that's going to be awesome. I'm down for the Diamond Trio giving us an absolute ditty. Not only are Ruby and Sapphire confirmed to appear, which was kind of inevitable, their appearances already worked a lot into the show itself and its story arcs, so something as extra 
extravagant as a movie is sure to include them. While the roles could be small, although I really hope they're not, Lars and Sadie singing a song maybe could be a part of just an opening musical number in Beach City. After all, if Nana Falls part of the performance list, then I'm assuming she may just have a quick moment in the song as opposed to having a full blown musical number of her own. But stranger things have happened and we all love Nana Fwao. No one would mind if she had her own song. For the inclusion of the diamonds, I'm thinking the role in the film will be minimal, but they'll have enough screen time to satisfy fans. Having that absolute confirmation that this movie is after Change Your Mind recontextualizes the way we look at the final moments of the episode. Namely, the diamonds leaving behind Pink Diamond's legship, which is now officially inherited by Steven. By the phrasing of this synopsis, while it is kind of a generic anime film synopsis, like remove the Steve Universe specific terms, and this can apply to almost any Dragon Ball movie, any Naruto movie, so on and so forth, a new enemy coming to Earth strongly implies they're coming from outer space, and they're not anything being awakened on Earth. So naturally, as the story goes, this would attract Steven and the Crystal Gems to go out into space with Pink Diamond Ship and the Sun Incinerator if Lars still kept it, which I honestly can see Steven having the diamond just part and Lars like, hey, come on, he's with me, let him keep the ship, and we can get a new one. But yes, with a new intergalactic threat, it only makes sense Steven's gonna hit up his ants for help. Ant yellow, blue, white, some alien came to Earth and kidnapped my dad. Actually, I really hope Greg doesn't get kidnapped again. But yes, Steven will likely go to the diamonds for help, if, at the very least, any possible insight on their new foe which could set the groundwork to explore more of Homeworld's history, other enemies of the diamonds, the alien races they need an army for. I've said it plenty of times throughout the years, but Yellow Diamond wanted the cluster, a geo weapon, for a reason. We have tons of soldier gems for a reason. They have warships and all their aircraft strapped with weapons for a reason. So it would be cool if the antagonist of the film was tied to that very vague plot thread. However, the initial promotion for the movie and even the one now really pushes the idea that the villain will be a gem. But would it really be a Steven Universe adventure if they didn't go out into space? Other ideas I've thrown out in the past is that the antagonist could be a Morganite or some kind of gem that holds a vendetta against Pink Diamond. And now that Pink Diamond's somewhat survival as Steven Universe is made known amongst Homeworld, this gem and their lust for revenge finally has a new face to the Pink Diamond name, someone to claim their revenge against. A gem more powerful than anything and anyone they've ever faced before. Leading Steven to go to the diamonds and they're like, ha 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 ha, oh yeah, we know that gem. <laughs> she hates you, Steven. You gotta hide. But this also has me thinking that the diamonds may be rendered powerless at some point in the movie. After all, having yellow, blue, and white diamond involved is kind of just like having three gods on your side. How is another gem going to take them down? Something terrible could happen. Leaving Steven to embark on an intergalactic journey to rescue the diamonds, proving their innocence as leaders trying to turn a new leaf along the way. After all, the diamond redemption was a really huge pill to swallow. So having a full blown movie to flesh that out, further explore that, how could you not be excited? But of course, this is all speculation. The movie being a musical was actually foreshadowed at San Diego Comic Con 2018. Every year at Cartoon Network's Steven Universe panel, the panel is always accompanied by a free poster, which of course changes every year to better reflect the show at the time. In 2017, we had a full-blown poster of the Crystal Gems against the Diamonds, which I think worked as great artwork for Season 5 as a whole. However, last year, the poster was something a bit, uh, different. Despite the main focus of Cartoon Network's presence at San Diego Comic-Con that year being the grand reveal of White Diamond and the announcement of the Steven Universe movie, the poster was of Steven and all of the townies in particular playing musical instruments. It was very cute and wholesome, but the exact opposite you would expect from a panel that had to deal with the reveal of White Diamond and Steven Universe moving into its biggest arc yet. But now that it's public information that the movie is a musical, accompanied with the announcement of the movie at that panel, we can look at that poster in a different light. It was a clue this entire time for what experience we were going to get out of the movie. Now wrapping up, I want to go back and take a look at all the collaborators on this film. Again, we have Chance the Rapper, which is huge. I don't believe he's ever had a public interest in Steven Universe, but he has shared his affinity for animation in the past. And the budget for this movie must be beyond Cartoon Network's comfort zone, because just getting Chance has to be quite the pretty penny. But again, they decided to go all out. If you didn't believe Cartoon Network does love Steven Universe before, you have to believe it now. Estelle, which is to be expected since she's Garnet, Gallant, 
who I never really listened to before, but I've heard that name pop up so many times throughout the years. So I can recognize their presence is also a pretty huge deal. Ivan Sarashi, who of course composed the score, Jeff Liu, who was one of my favorite storyboarders on the show, he actually moved to OKKO, OK but yes, he also dabbles in music, and has helped out with music in the show before, I believe predominantly throughout season one. Jeff Ball, he also helps out with music in the show, but oddly enough, my biggest takeaway here was Mike Kroll. If anyone's unfamiliar or they don't remember, he was the artist who guest starred in Last One Out of Beat City, performing at the Open Garage concert Steve and Amethyst and Pearl went to. A very long time ago, I believe 2017, Mike Kroll and Rebecca Sugar teased that they were working on something huge for Steven Universe fans. This was it. That should give you an idea of how long they've been working on this movie. I've said before it was in production in 2017, they took a few months off after Change Your Mind, then rallied up a team just for the movie, and began working on it ever since. This movie alone has to be one of the biggest labors of love Rebecca Sugar has ever created. I can't wait to see what her, the crew universe, and the honorary crew universe of people who are just working on this film have to offer because I know it's going to be an amazing spectacle. Again, the movie is 90 minutes long, the length of a lot of movies you would see in theaters. And that's two hours with commercials. So again, you're getting the content of almost two Steven Bombs. That's absolutely insane. We should be getting our first trailer of the film at San Diego Comic Con, which is again in a few weeks. So keep your eyes out on Cart Network social media. Again, I will update you guys every step along the way. And honestly, it's taking me a long time to record this video, way longer than whatever the final versions are gonna end up being, just because I keep pausing and just freaking out. I can't, I just can't believe they're doing this. But as always, I wanna hear your thoughts. What do you think? How do you feel that Chance the Rapper is in this TV Universe movie? That all of the diamonds will be present? All of your favorites and more that they haven't even revealed yet? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below or tweet your thoughts at Roundtable Vids. And for my own thoughts, you can find me at Osher Vox. We're also on Instagram. Help our to grow by either becoming a member of the channel or supporting us over at Patreon. Link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please order to like and subscribe to the Roundtable for more great cartoon content. Thank you for watching and I hope you have an awesome day. Austric Vox, signing out.